Hello, and today we will talk about a step-by-step -step guide how to actually automatize the reporting and manufacturing companies. Stay tuned. Digital Twin Podcast is a place where technology and business is going hand in hand. If you are thinking about digitalizing your company, you found the right place. Podcast is hosted by Adrian Stelma, consultant who implements IT solutions for manufacturing companies. And Paul Pahovic, industrial digitalization expert who helps global companies to optimize production processes. Hmm. Hello and welcome. <laughs> uh, I feel like this is um, an evolution of, of our previous episode that we started uh, talking about uh, your favorite thing ever, which is uh, <laughs> digitalizing your reporting system. And um, this one will be a little more tailored uh, to uh, manufacturing. Mm, and also this one, this episode, will feature uh, the six-step process that you came up with, right? Like this is not based on chat GPT or anything. This is, this is based on your experience. Yeah, no, basically more than 10 years now I'm working with uh, manufacturing companies and digitalizing reporting f uh, for uh, as an example because not, it's not only uh, digitalizing the reporting. So I just made a six-step process mm. which I think it's uh, how you should, uh, if you are thinking about uh, digitalizing the report, uh, how, you should, how you should do it step by step. Sure. I will, I will try to add something to, to your... Uh, process as I believe there should be more steps than six. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> but let's start. Um, let's start with this with with the first step. Then, uh, mm -hmm. I, I can of course you can you can do a little intro. Mm -hmm. mm, but um, the first step that you mentioned is uh, like current reports, which is usually the current state of reporting processes at a company. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because. Um, Every company, manufacturing company, have to report uh, work. Mm -hmm. right? uh, every operator from the machine is writing down how the machine performed, how many parts it produced, what was the downtimes, and so on. So the first step is to actually, if you if you are talk talking to someone who wants to automatize the reporting, uh, the first step will be he wants to see uh, mm -hmm. what are those reports look like what kind of information are in, th in these reports. Mm -hmm. uh, if there is uh, the same scheme, for example, is the same sheet, or, uh, or in every machine you have, uh, you have a way different way to, to report. Yes, and this is actually the first difference. Okay. <laughs> because I would, uh, I would say that um, you should start with a clear goal or objective of, of that process. So... Uh, and and then a second step, you know, would be to kind of analyze and and audit the the current, uh, the current state. But uh, but yeah, but let, let's 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 stick with uh, with your approach. So, we so yeah, because oh, I want to okay. add. Okay. Uh, first thing is that we are talking about how to automatize automatize the reporting, mm -hmm. right? So we know why we want to automatize. Now we are taking this. Uh, we want to implement it, right? Okay. So so, so oh. Okay, so we are strictly focusing on implementing. Mm -hmm. uh, so we already did set up the goals for the implementation, yeah. and now we just have to implement it. Okay. Yeah, and we talk about <laughs> the goals in the previous <laughs> episode. Uh, yes, 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 absolutely. Uh, so the second step, uh, you know, according to to, to your uh, process, would be uh, data collection would be databases would be you know sources of, of information yeah because you know if you have this report let's say it's a it's a just one page right so the question is from where those information are written on this report mm -hmm. so is it based on something which is on HMI on the machine is it something which operator from the machine sees and he writes it down uh, is it something which uh, I don't know someone else, for example, from the from the some quality department, is is uh, is writing down this report? So, what are the sources from the data which are written on this report? Okay, data sources. So, so we're not we're not talking about uh, 
we're talking about like a location of of, of that data. We're we talking about the way of like kind of accessing those data. Mm -hmm. So okay, so let's make an example. Uh, first step it was uh, to collect those reports. Mm -hmm. So I I make made the first step. I went to to the machine and I talked to operator. Okay, show me your report. Mm -hmm. And he shows me that okay, this is one page mm -hmm. from this machine. And the second step will be okay. So now tell me from where you exactly knows this information. You know mm -hmm. this information. So for example, you produce uh, 50 pieces of whatever you are producing. How do you know that this is 50 pieces? Is it telling you the counter on the machine, right? Is you are just counting it manually, or I don't know, someone else from the machine told you that. From where exactly do you know this information? And he tells me, okay, I see it on the on the screen of the machine, right? Okay, so that's uh, that's a s that's a source already because I'm trying to you know this is the source. Think of the next step, yeah. So you so you know uh, that uh, you're either doing this work manually or you're kind of looking at some kind of screen and 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 and, and then you write it down. Um, and a piece of paper, mm. and then the next step would be like the data flow from a source. How mm -hmm. how would you you know explain that to yeah, our because, audience? Uh, let's say so. On the second step, I know that uh, the, cur uh, the particular information, like production ca counter, uh, is uh, taken directly from the screen from the machine, right? So there is a screen on the machine, and the screen tells uh, a lot of different information to the operator, and one of this information production counter. So the third step will be asking myself or asking the, um, the services uh, or IT department or someone from the organization is mm -hmm. if there is a possibility to take this information directly from the machine. So where is this information in the machine? Because if the machine is showing you on the screen the counter, uh, it means the machine has it in in the PLC, in the computer. There is there. I, it is there, right? Mm -hmm. So I have to know exactly step by step each data, what is the current state, mm -hmm. so where the operator takes it, and where is it, in which, uh, in which uh, piece of device or which piece of software. Sure. And then since you have that, because we are basically, you know, trying to out, out, autom create an automated process. <laughs> yeah, right? we want so, to take so the data directly from the source. Yeah, yeah. so it, we eliminate uh, a, a lot of, you know, problems with that. And then, mm, is this the time, you know, to, to like, develop a, a detailed plan of, of this implementation at, at this point? Because, like, you know, we know what we want to do, you know, we know where the data is coming from, we know kind of how to create an automated process of collecting that data. Um, I think w what I would do at this point is I would, you know, sit down and uh, create, a, um, create a, a, maybe not super uh, detailed plan but a detailed plan on you know what's next how am i going to put uh, to, to connect all the dots and, and 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 start creating and maybe start with like a proof of concept mm -hmm. so so it's not you know a crazy change but but s small steps at a time mm -hmm. so on the end of the third step what should i have i should have a list with all of the information uh, which are important for this automated report mm -hmm. How is it done currently? And what is the data source, right? Mm -hmm. So I have this. The, uh, and then what I should do, I have to talk with someone who actually wants to, to <laughs> automatize this report and ask him, okay, so what is your goal now mm -hmm. currently with this? Do you want to automatize uh, reports in the entire organization? And you have every machine is, which is exactly the same and and the report looks the same and so on. Mm -hmm. Or you want to focus only on this machine. And this is the entire project. You don't want to talk about anything else. You want to talk about this machine, right? And regarding to this conversation, uh, regarding to, to, you know, how actually the entire machinery park works, how the machine works, we are talking about proof of concept. Mm -hmm. So we decide, okay, 
you don't have to uh, automatize the entire report on one machine. Uh, you can just, uh, for example, take the information, which is the easiest one to un automatize, mm -hmm. because, for example, they are uh, very easily to access from the PLC. You don't have to search for them. You exactly know uh, the addresses of, of this information in the PLC. And you, wanna you, you can only focus on those information, right? And uh, and this is the, the the so we have to be more broad regarding to the entire project, and more detailed about proof of concept. Okay, so this is actually where we agree. <laughs> this is actually where we agree because this proof of proof, proof of concept uh, it, it could be just uh, like a gradual um, implementation or gradual gradual rollout of of of. Uh, of the process, so you know, it doesn't mean that you know we have to do it uh, for every like single you know employee or, or every single process. It could be specific to some production line, just one of the production lines that are you know currently operating. Uh, so yeah, that that's uh, that makes a lot of sense. You know, to start slow and 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 and, and implement the first step. And and you know figure figure out if that works and then you know kind of scale it, um, scale it up. So since since we have that we have the POC and it works. <laughs> the next obvious obvious step would be you know to kind of create this automated uh, process for generating reports, right? Uh, yeah. The the next step because you know if you have uh, written down how the proof of concept would look like. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to know what are the assumptions for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the entire goal is to make it as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. So, because, you know, usually people are looking like this kind of projects that we want to have the entire thing done. So, for example, if there is a report, there's 50 things on this, re 50 different information on this report, it means that if we are doing this, uh, this digitalization on this machine, so we want to have the entire, entire thing, right? The problem is that some of those information as are accessed really easily and some of them it could be really hard. For example, because of the information it's taken from an ERP, from different data sources and so on. And it is very expensive on the beginning to just create the entire machinery, communication and so on with those different uh, places only for the pr proof of concept, mm -hmm. right? And what it does, it means that the budget for the project is getting bigger and uh, the motivation is going lower because mm -hmm. we have only just one report and it costs hundred thousand of dollars, right? So this is the most important thing is to make it fast mm -hmm. and uh, take the data which are the most easily accessible. And if you have this, so you know what kind of data and so on, the next step will be to try to make exactly the same report. If it will look exactly the same as the current one but some of the data which we uh, which we took from the previous step we defined it in the previous step mm -hmm. will be uh, will will uh, will be in this report auto in automatic way so it will be directly from the machine for example okay so since we have that automated uh, report happening already mm -hmm. uh, do you recommend and if you recommend how do you uh, approach um Making sure that, that that everything works correctly. Mm -hmm. How 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 do you set up this this monitor and analyzing process? Because you know it it might seem that it that, that that it all works right because it's automated, so so it will work one way or another. But how do you make sure that this is actually um, you know set up properly? Yeah, because the, the full uh, automation and integration you have when, for example, the data comes directly from the from the PLC mm -hmm. to ERP, for example. Mm -hmm. So there's no n nothing uh, nothing in between. And uh, I'm glad you're asking about this testing process. Let's say because every time you have you want to have this automated way, you should have some time. Uh, when you will be testing this report and comparing it to the current way which uh, the reporting was done uh, mm -hmm. in the organization. So what I mean is that there will be maybe one week, maybe two weeks, when you have uh, you still um, type the information to the ERP, mm -hmm. let's say, manually, 
but you will be ba you will be basing not f uh, from the report f which was written down by operator, but from the data which is uh, showing you the uh, the reporting system by itself, right? And then and then you just compare it and, and you and make you sure it. that it's the same. Yeah, right? yeah. You compare it if it's the same, and if you see that there is for for a few days for a few weeks, there's uh, you know no difference. Then you can uh, you can make the full automation. Sure, sure, sure. That sounds uh, <laughs> sounds good, and that should be that kind of process should be running for a week, two weeks. How how much how much time? I think uh, two weeks. Uh, in most of times, it's it's mm. good enough, right? Uh, it depends if there's problems in between, right? Because, for example, uh, and how the process is uh, done uh, currently, right? Because. Uh, in some cases, the operator uh, doesn't have a uh, interface with the machine. So, for example, he he is doing everything manually. For example, the, uh, he's counting manually the time uh, of the downtime in the machine, right? And if it's everything is done manually, and now we have to automatize it, mm -hmm. you will have uh, you know a lot of uh, differences, right? But if if it's done uh, in a way that the machine is uh, reporting to operator and the operator is reporting to uh, to to someone else mm -hmm. to the system, it's much easier because it's based on the same information. Yes. And then this is that, that was number five. That was step number five. Yeah. Before we move to step number six, I mm -hmm. think it would be interesting um for you to share some kind of case study mm -hmm. you know that you know, from your experience a any a anything any any process of digitalizing r reporting that you could share with us you know um, most of times when customers are uh, starting with uh, digitalization for example they want to implement uh, mes system mm -hmm. right so measuring execution system if they want to implement this kind of uh, inf uh, it uh, system with is taking data from different uh, sources the first step and the proof of concept for that is automatizing the manual reporting from the machines mm -hmm. And um, of course, it depends on the process because some of the uh, in manufacturing some uh, some examples and there are a lot of examples when the process is done fully manually, mm -hmm. like right, uh, and some of them are full uh, full automated and operator is just you know uh, checking if the entire process is done correctly and he's just writing the report. So it depends. But uh, I have uh, I, I've chosen three examples of ROI, mm -hmm. uh, so the return on if of investment uh, from three different projects mm -hmm. uh, regarding to, to, to reporting, uh, from, uh, from automatizing reporting, and, and showing how actually was the, uh, the return of investment from three different, uh, from fri three different customers and three different, different projects. Let's do it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay, so first one will be... Uh, Standard reporting from the machines. Mm -hmm. uh, customer have a customer had twenty machines uh, for proof of concept, and he said, "Okay, let's uh, let's automatize the communication between the operator and the uh, and the uh, uh, ERP system." Mm -hmm. And uh, we checked uh, that every uh, one of those operators is spending around fifteen minutes on writing down the report, mm -hmm. right? So the the easiest way to uh, to actually uh, check only the ROI from the time spent by, by the operators from reporting was to count how much time in the year they are actually spending on the report. Someone will say, "Okay, fifteen minutes, it's just nothing, right?" Okay, but if you count twenty people for fifteen minutes for three shifts, right, mm -hmm. uh, it is around uh, four thousand hours per year. Four thousand hours. Then you take just, you know, let's just take uh, 10 euros for an hour uh, for the operator. You have uh, 40,000 40, euros, mm. right? 40,000 euros. So 40,000 euros uh, and the entire uh, cost of the system was around 30,000 euros, right? Right. So for 20 machines, uh, the, the customer spent 30,000 euros and he... He have uh, forty thousand uh, euros, uh, which he is not spending for the operators on time on reporting. And now this fifteen minutes he can spend on actually production. So not only he is 
not paying for the reporting because it's done al- automatically, but also he has mo- more time to invest in production process. Beautiful. Um, and 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 it's <laughs> it seems uh, it seems that every you know uh, every process of digitalizing uh, reporting you know brings in like a positive uh, ROI. Mm-hmm. Is it is it like that, or, or there are cases that you know you can do a lot of work and, and and the idea was you know to save money and time, but at the end of the day, it doesn't happen. You know, it, it, of course, it depends when, uh, where actually you're doing your manufacturing business. Mm-hmm. Because, for example, you can have access to cheaper workforce mm-hmm. or cheaper electricity. Or, for example, the climate is like that. You don't have to heat your, you know, your entire plant and so on. So it, it depends, of course. Uh, also, some of the mm, technologies, some of the implementation doesn't have sense because they are too expensive uh for example i don't know uh, r- implementing robots and packaging process which will, you know which now is manually done by two people and the robot will cost 10 million because mm-hmm. the process is so specific and every time it's way different so i think it depends but if you think about reporting i have never uh you know seen any process which will be not uh, the return on investment it will be uh more than uh, two years Okay. Do we have time, you know, to share the second uh, case study? Sure. Let's do it. Okay. So the second one will be uh, uh, because the first one, uh, as I said, we had a process which was just automatized. So we just have some time uh, for operator to produce more. Mm -hmm. Uh, The second one will be that uh, uh, I had a customer which uh, said, okay, our uh, our cycle time is around 30 minutes, Mm -hmm. right? And he said, uh, we have a problem uh, because we cannot start the process if we are not sure that the process will end during those eight hours work of the operator. Sure. Right. So, so, so he doesn't want to go over the, the eight-hour shift, right? Yeah, it mm-hmm. couldn't, right? It was yeah. like, mm-hmm. we cannot, uh, a- a- any minute, the operator cannot work more than eight hours. Mm-hmm. That's defined. Mm-hmm. So the problem is that, for example, if we have only 25 minutes left uh, till end of our shift, we cannot start. Mm-hmm. So operators actually are not doing anything for those 25 minutes. And this is a problem because we do it every shift. Every shift we have some time uh, which is actually n- nothing is producing it, right? right. So, okay, so I ask, uh, I mean, why is that? Why the second person, which comes from the second shift, why he cannot finish the process, right? Because it's kind of obvious. And he tells me, the problem is that the, the product is very customized and every operator is actually making it in a, wi- in, in a specific way, right? Mm-hmm. So there are differences. So we they tested it and they checked if there was process which was started the operator who comes after he spends a lot of time mm. to actually in figuring out when finished the one before him. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it was not the way, right? So what we've done uh, was to automatize uh, the way uh, the process looks like by by implementing the electronic instruction for the operator. So we made sure that every operator is making step by step the same process. And what what happened? Uh, the, the, when the shift ends, the operator can can operate till end of the shift. And in the end of the shift, uh, the one who comes after that, he sees on the screen what will be the next step. Mm-hmm. Right. More of that, uh, he knows. Uh, one of one of the things is that we actually gained this twenty five minutes, which I, I talked before. And the second thing is that reporting was also automatized because mm-hmm. of it, right? Because of every cycle time, uh, the the system knows that that the actually uh, process finished. It knows exactly what was the downtimes between those different steps, and so on. Great. So and now I'll tell you the return of investment. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be crazy. But uh, it's interesting that uh, the the automation of of you know report generation was kind of a side effect because you you did kind of you know optimize and and 
and and and created a, a flow that can be easily you know passed over to some so some some other operators some other some other people and and as a result mm -hmm. you know there was a, a report created that 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 um that shows uh uh yeah so, so sorry so 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 what's interesting is the fact that the the report was only a side effect of of optimizing this process so so any um operator can just take over yeah the the, the, the you know production right yeah there was a lot of benefits i want to focus directly on this project mm -hmm. but as you mentioned first of thing was that uh, we had the same process every time. Mm -hmm. Second thing was that the report was automated. Mm -hmm. And third thing, which we didn't mention before, it was that the actually uh, you don't have to learn the process. Uh, so you can just hire someone and he can just move on to, mm -hmm. this, to this process because you have the electronic instructions, mm -hmm. which is telling you step by step what to do, right? Right. So the return on investment was crazy because there was 30 minutes in every shift for eight operators, mm -hmm. right? Which was like you know you don't y you lose it, right? So in in a year, if you if you count three shifts and seven days uh, per week, it was like around four and a half thousand uh, hours, mm -hmm. which was not which where uh, our customer was paying to to those people, but no product was uh, was produced mm -hmm. in those time, right? So you have around if you count like 10 euros per hour, let's say. So you have 45,000 uh, euros and the system costs 20,000. So you have a uh, return of investment around uh, five months. Yes. Yeah. And, and then the next year that you're, that you're using that system, it's, it's just pure return. Yeah, just investment. after six months, it's pure yeah. Re return, yeah. Okay. I, I, think, uh, I think two examples is good enough. I don't think we need to go to the third one, but we need to, you know, sum it up. With with the uh, uh, with the sixth uh, the sixth step the very last step of of, of, of the process that that you created based on your mm -hmm. e experience and and that would be the moment when you know you have that um, automated uh, process of creating reports up and running and now it, it's probably the time uh, to integrate that with other systems within the company. Yeah, if the proof of concept is done and you actually know what goes wrong, what goes good, uh, the, the last step will be to actually uh, finish the project. So you have to connect it with other reports, mm -hmm. other systems, or maybe do a rollout for the entire uh, data sources from the machine. Mm -hmm. Of course, in every this first and last step, it will be different in, in, any, in every case mm -hmm. because, you know, in every case, you have a different machine. In every case, you have a different process. And in 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 in, in um, ev every case, you have a different uh, approach and a different uh, mm, readiness of the cu customer, right? Because every customer can be in a different uh, step uh, on his digitalizing uh, uh, way, uh, you know, roadmap, right? Yeah, but the, the finished one will be that you have to finish it. Uh, you have to integrate it with the surrounding. So you have a data flow uh, from the source directly to anywhere you want to have it. And then you can think about about uh, next step on your digital roadmap. <laughs> yeah, what, what what other systems would... What other systems could you integrate that... that, that uh, th that system with, you know, because mm -hmm. it sounds like, yeah, there is, you know, in I the, the integration with other systems is, is important. But what other systems, like ER ERP, like w w how do you, yeah, how do you understand integration with other systems within the company? You know, because uh, a standard uh, manufacturing company have uh, tens, hundreds sometimes of different systems, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if you have set it up a really big ERP, Maybe most of functionalities you have already on ERP. But for example, you have production planning, right? It could be on ERP, it, it could be a different system. Uh, you have a warehouse management system. You have MES. Uh, so you have a different systems which should take information from the current data. For example, if there is a downtime on the machine, uh, planning should know that, 
because mm-hmm. if they don't know that, they think that they finish the plan until the end of the shift, but mm-hmm. it's just fictional information because mm-hmm. you know that right now. You don't have to wait until the shift is end. Mm-hmm. So, uh, of course, in a bigger scale, so if you are th- thinking about the entire manufacturing, the digitalization reporting process, you think about all of those systems. But in this uh, last step, which I'm talking here about, is to make sure that uh, this proof of concept is done in a way that all of the uh, the people are benefit from it. So all of the uh, data sources uh, which can take uh, some conclusions from from this mm-hmm. uh, information uh, can do it. Yeah, so it's just limitless, right? The, the, the integrations with other systems that existing systems or maybe the systems that, that, that will be implemented in the company, you know, within... Uh, you know, within some time. Okay, so it it, 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 it makes sense. Takeaways. Okay. You go first. <laughs> okay. So I think uh, that, uh, y- y- you know, I think the most important in g- digitalization, uh, in starting with digitalization, is uh, creating uh, good uh, assumptions for ROI. Mm-hmm. Uh, I talked uh, today about two examples when, uh, you know, the numbers were crazy when you actually, the return of investment of uh, of software was uh, five months, nine, nine months, mm-hmm. and so on. And if you do it in a good way, uh, it will be motivating you to actually uh, make this proof of concept work and uh, start uh, your journey with digitalization in something which is not that much uh, connected to everything else, right? Because more more uh, bigger process you will take for this first step of digitalization, it will be harder uh, to do and uh, the entire road will be uh, longer, right? So define a proof of concept which will be smaller uh, define a ROI, which will be fast, and uh, see if if your goals uh, will be met. Sure. I would say that after the whole process is done mm-hmm. successfully, because this is important, uh, I- it's it's crucial, you know, to share that success story within the organization, because that should you know enable uh, people to be like more open, you know, for more and more digitalization. Which you know only is gonna, which is, which is gonna improve um, their life. So the case studies that you that you have uh, shared with us, I think every company that that have implemented um, digitalized process of like generating uh, reports should have a case study, same one that that you just mentioned, case study that simply you know talks about the, the process and about the benefits of digitalizing. Uh, re- reporting process. So that would be my takeaway for today. Okay. So thank you very much, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you.